part of the reason um, we're celebrating today, and you'll see on the screen above us. So uh, those are four people uh, that represent four people in our community we've lost this year. Uh, first was my mom up there in the top. That's me and my mom. She passed away on December 27th of this year. And Jim Johnson, who I mentioned earlier, uh, there in his black and white suit. And John Schumacher, who's also represented uh, at the baseball cap in that picture. And we uh, had a celebration of his life at a Catholic church in the Castro uh, back in July, I believe, or August. And then in the big portrait is Monica Lynn Montecalvo, our Chief Operating Officer David Montecalvo's mother passed away on Wednesday. And David would, was at Unity Village when he got the news that his mom had passed away in her sleep the overnight and uh, flew back home. And he's home with her right now, taking care of all of that. Thank you, Thank you so much. That's Thank so you, nice. sweetie. <laughs> so this is my husband and manservant. <laughs> <laughs> And so I just wanted to give us some space for those of you who hadn't heard about David's mom's passing. We haven't put out an official announcement of it. They're still making plans. David's taking his time to make sure he's of, uh, in the right space to create her celebration of life. And as soon as we know more, we'll let you all know. Uh, and if anyone would like to send David a note, I can, uh, after service, I will give out uh, contact information for him on how you can reach him. Um, and this is part of why we do this celebration to bring into consciousness, right? Into our spiritual practices, the rituals that really help us navigate life, which includes death. None of us can escape that. And, and when we can make it part of our whole existence, it is better. So Eva and I had a conversation last year after we did this service, and uh, from her perspective, growing up in a Hispanic Mexican household, uh, and where they practice Dia de los Muertos uh, annually, right, as part of your ritual, um, she thought she could bring a better perspective for us, and we are constantly looking for ways to grow and understand more of what we don't know. So I was delighted that she said yes to sitting down here and talking to me about this. And it, it as we talk about all the time, it enriches all of us. So what little research I did, and Eva and I had a conversation about this, um, Dia de los Muertos started as an Aztec and Inca uh, uh, tradition. It comes from the um, from the natives of Central America, and it was in the Aztec calendar a way of understanding uh, the the bridge between life and death, and that the people on the other side, in this literal in the city of the dead, in that tradition, needed us to interact with them and provide things on the altar like food and water and favorite foods, uh, and 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 then of course there was colonization, and the Europeans arrived and brought Catholicism to Mexico, mm -hmm. right? And so that changed everything. You grew up in a Catholic household, is that correct? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say more about that? <laughs> I, yeah, I was baptized. I did, I did most of the things. I just didn't get confirmed because I started questioning what I believed, um, I still remember my prayers, all in Spanish. I went to church like service in Spanish, but um, it's still an integral part of my family. They still go like almost every week. Um, so it's it it's a nice feeling though. Like I I see their love for the Virgin Mary and for God and all of that, and I I still appreciate it. And a lot of ofrendas, so the ofrenda is the altar where all the pictures and the mementos might go up in a, in a household. And we have a picture, I'm going to ask Bruno to pull up. This is, Eva, this is your family's ofrenda. Yeah. Is that right now up? No, um, no, this not, is last not year. Not yet. Not yet. This is last year's? <laughs> yeah, this is last year's. So can you talk about what's on it? You might be able to see it there too, but. Oh, yeah. 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 Wait, no, maybe not. <laughs> let, me, let me put on my glasses. <laughs> 
So we have pictures of family members that have passed. Um, Sempasuchil, which is this, the marigolds, mm -hmm. the flowers. Um, we have rosaries, uh, images of the Virgin Mary, crosses. That's where the Catholic part comes in. Um, but there's also like sugar skulls and, you know, images of skeletons, La Catrina, things like that. That's more like the indigenous side. Um, you know, my grandpa's hat in the corner over here. Oh, nice. Um, food, just like stuff from, stuff that was theirs that they loved. Yeah. And what's really interesting to me, too, is like um, when Eva mentioned the images of the Virgin Mary, that was really powerful in the research I did, too, because in the Aztecs, they had a goddess of the underworld. It was an Aztec goddess of the underworld. And so to have that uh, transitioned into Mother Mary makes more sense. But I'm going to ask Eva to pronounce it because it it's not even Spanish. It's Mixteca si Huatl. It's Nahuatl, which is the... the one of the indigenous languages from Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is so important because none of us um, really exist outside of this understanding, especially here in the United States and uh, the West Coast. California was always part of Mexico. It was historically a part of all the cities, San Francisco, San Rafael, where I live, mm -hmm. all of them are Mexican names and Hispanic names, yeah. but coming from the indigenous. When we did the... Uh, 23andMe, the DNA swab on our daughter Roma. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of her heritage uh, is uh, Aztec and Mayan and is Native American from Mexico. Well, her oh. parents came, both of her parents came from Mexico, yeah. but th there's a lot of Native blood in her too. So to understand that intersection where we all exist in what we might call pagan culture, which is just spirituality, and pagans taken on a derogatory term, but pagan spirituality is really powerful, and it's things we practice constantly without knowing it. The, the native and pagan cultures of Europe were interspersed into the Catholicism, and then came here over to the Western Hemisphere and interacted with the native communities here, and so there's this huge melting pot of all the different spiritual lineages, and then we sit here in a unity church, which the name replies that there is one path to God, that all paths lead to it, right? Mm -hmm. that, that there's one path, but that all paths lead to the one God, and all spirituality is linked, mm -hmm. right? And so what I want to talk about is, so what is it that works for you today in this ritual, even if it's not linked for you to Catholicism? Is there something that is still important to you about the ofrenda and the altar and all that? So you can talk about that? Um, it's, the, it's the connection with them, even though they've been gone for a really long time, but I still, I still feel them with me, especially when I like, smell my grandpa's hat or I see like the the dents on his um, his cane that he would use all the time. It had like a dragon on it. I don't know. He thought it was cool. <laughs> um, because they're they're never really gone. That's that's the big takeaway from all of this is that they're never really gone. And and especially when I sing and things like that, like Amor Eterno, that was one of their favorite songs. I imagine them standing back there, watching me because they're a part of me, and, and that's never gonna go away. Yeah, and in the second song you sang, it's thank you for life. Mm -hmm. Thank you to life, thank you to life. Thank you to life. <laughs> thank you to life. And in one of the verses, I know you're talking about that, thank you for life, these eyes which I see everything, right? Mm. In a unity we talk about, it's not just physical sight, but the, but the wisdom that it gives us, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what else does that song say to you? Um, lots of different things like life is giving me ears to listen to wind turbines and barks and you know all the sounds that life provides. Um, it's given me feet to walk through valleys and mountains. Um, it's given me a heart. It's um, feeling the amazement of what comes through the human brain that we're given the power of words and we can express ourselves you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, in, um, in 
when you said ears, I instantly heard my mom's voice. And I bet a lot of you can do that right now too. Can hear and it's, we can recognize voices so clearly, right? Especially those primary voices in our lives. And one of the last things I got to do with my mom was sing, mm. right? And so uh, I have a video of it that I'll always remember, but one of the things I got to do together was sing. And she sang, she, could, she couldn't remember my name, she didn't know who I was, but she would sing anything with me. And we sang, I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places that this heart of mine embraces all day through. That's beautiful. Right? That's gonna make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nothing wrong with that, right? To cry and be able to hold mom and I can hear her. She knew all the lyrics to the song and mm. she couldn't remember anything else. Mm. And that magic of music and voice and hearing. One of the things that I love about the research I've done on, on Dia de los Muertos and looking at it is that in the uh, Mesoamerican culture, the idea that you went to the city of the dead, that they just went to the other side, right? It wasn't heaven like we in Catholicism or in traditional Christianity we talk about heaven and hell. They just went to the other side, but they were still interacting with us and right. still all here. And one of the, the cross-cultural rituals I understand too was that sometimes there would be relics of them, even parts of their bones or sometimes would be part of the, an ofrenda and part of the ritual. And in Catholicism, there's lots of saints who have relics. We can have the, the, the actual bones of saints and understanding that the saints are also working with us. And that concept of that they are here interceding on our behalf and helping us. And the whole idea from this ritual and this culture is that the loved ones are right here over our shoulders, whispering, dancing with us, having fun, celebrating in this holiday. Yeah. And yes, we miss them. We absolutely yeah. miss them and it is uh, okay to cry about it, but it's also an important ritual of remembering the good stuff that they live within us. Definitely. Yeah. So, if you could wave a magic wand, right? <laughs> and I think you can. <laughs> I know we can. And if there is something that uh, you learned from this holiday, from your culture, that you could help all of us be able to incorporate it and honor it without appropriating it, right? Mm. How, would you, how would you lead us through that journey? Because those of us who were raised in a Hispanic culture, even though I was raised in a Catholic culture, we never celebrated this holiday. We celebrated Day of the Dead, right? Uh, yeah. Excuse me, uh, uh, All Saints Day, yeah. All Souls Day, right? Same but day. we didn't celebrate, right, same day, but the two have merged. But this culture is much richer than we experienced mm -hmm. in, in my culture, in, in New Orleans, with all the French culture <laughs> and Hispanic culture mixed in. But, yeah. but this is spe specifically Mexican Mm -hmm. Right, because of the Aztec, Mayan, and T T Toltec yeah. traditions, right, that very, got merged in. Yes, very old traditions and very wise. So, how could we, as a community, do this? Um, one of the biggest things I think is understanding that it's not Halloween. I've definitely <laughs> seen people dress up. There, there was one year um, people were putting up their altars in, I think, Garfield Park, and someone came in with, like, antlers and, and like, spider webs on the antlers. I, I didn't really understand what it was. I guess it was, like, a costume, but um, it's more so about your loved ones that have gone, like, put things on the altar that meant something to them or, you know, have some connection with you and them. Leave food for them. Um, if they liked alcohol in this life, you can leave them a little bottle of tequila or something. <laughs> um, and definitely the sempasuchil, the, the marigolds, because it guides their way to your altar from the other place. And very interestingly, when I got these marigolds last year, the ones that are draped, <coughs> they're also used in Diwali. Mm. 
They're also used in the Indian Festival of Light, which is at the same time of year. So I, because marigolds are blooming right now in many places. Yeah. And so uh, it is really interesting that those, those two disparate cultures use the same marigolds. Yeah. Uh, so I loved that part. And, and I wanted to thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love being here. <laughs> Emma Aldez, everybody.